Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Gutfeld, along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Juan Williams, Eric Bowling, and a traffic cone is her TP, Dana Perino, The Five. <music> Donald Trump went to Facebook yesterday and asked a simple question. I'd like to ask all of the candidates that as politicians and really non-negotiators, people that don't negotiate jobs and lots of other things, how are you going to make America great again? See, that's smart. Prior to the debate, he's assuming his role in The Apprentice. He asks and the candidates answer. All that's missing is the boardroom table. But it's a great question. How do you make America great again? A better question, what makes America so great anyway? If you can't answer that without succumbing to jaded cynicism or shallow cliches, you're sunk. America needs a storyteller who can sell America, who doesn't mock what's already mocked by our foes, and who believes what we all believe without the platitudes and progressive shame. Our story matters as we face a competing story from ISIS. Their tale? It's come fight the infidel or die. And that's a compelling story, and it shows how evil can flourish in the desert, the culture, the abortion clinic. Evil rises in absence of good. A leader should see how our story since Vietnam has been chipped away by disbelief, an American agnosticism that isn't convinced of greatness. From taunting veterans to promoting anti-Western bile on campus, rather than fight evil, we now undermine the good. And so you can't return us to greatness if you dismiss what makes us great. Sacrifice, will, and honor. That's important whether it's an American sniper or John McCain's memoir. It doesn't matter. It doesn't appear in self-made myths or smug entitlement. We need a storyteller who gets that. To accept anything else means that our ambivalence is permanent and that making America great again is pure folly. Mm. 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 Yeah. So I want to go around the table. Maybe I'll start with you, Kimberly. My question if I could ask a question, would be how do you champion yes, you America in a way that unifies all America? What would you like to ask the candidates on Thursday, well, Kimberly? I would, I would like to ask them why they love America. Like, what is it about this country that they think is special and unique, and what are they going to do to preserve it and to move it forward? That's, That's like my question. Well, it was actually <laughs> better and more artful. No, it was, was just faster. <laughs> Yeah, yours was sort of verbose, but nevertheless, it's you meandering. got to the point. Mine was meandering. <laughs> I liked both questions. Yeah. All right. Well, that, thank you for maintaining. A happy five defense. table. <laughs> Juan, um, if you had a question, what would it be? I guess it would be about, you know, something substantial, like, you know, how we deal with the fact that so many people feel like can't get ahead in the country anymore and like they're, you know, treading water when it comes to bringing money in, sending kids to school and all the rest. You have a problem with treading water? Uh, yeah, because, you know, a lot of people are treading water at a pretty low level. They could drown pretty soon, so we don't want that to happen. Well, that's a downer. But let Eric? me just say, I mean, yes. these are serious questions. Yes. I don't think, by the way, how do you make America great again? Talk about an empty question. It's oh. an empty question if you don't have an answer. Yeah, you know, what Juan, is, that's why, because you could fill hours with the answer no, to that question. Like? Yes, you can. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like somebody who thinks, oh, we were great in the 50s. And we had to get great like that again. That sounds so silly. But you well, bring up a point that a it's point not a new campaign. question. It's 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 uh, it harkens back to the dates of Reagan. But let's get to that later. Eric, what question would you ask? So I, I think um, for me, the question would be sitting at that debate, going across the board, maybe starting left to right instead of the middle, would be jobs. I, it, it, everything matters. Security matters. The border matters. I think what matters most, touching on what Juan said, is how are you going to make um, more than 150 million people working in America. How are you going to make 200 million people work in America? What are you going to do specifically to create a job? Now, a lot of them, including Donald Trump, have said, I need to bring, we need to bring jobs back to America, but specifically, how are you going to do that? What, what exactly are you going to do to China or Mexico that it will be a job creator here? And you have to offer incentives. Oh. That's the thing. Well, you, ha I, you have to decrease taxes. You have to deregulate. You can't punish small businesses and entrepreneurs. Which is what we'll probably get from every single one of them. But <laughs> yeah. I will want more specifically. What do you mean? To what rate? You want to reduce taxes? Mm -hmm. Exactly what rate are you going to reduce? Change is it, the whole is tax it corporate structure. taxes? Is it personal income taxes? Is it capital gains taxes? And to what level? A, and number, and, and, and two, what exactly are you going to do with China? Are you going to 
put up uh, protective walls? Are you going to put up uh, trade barriers to China? I mean, these are questions that need right, right, right. Re specific But you've got to reform there. the IRS. I think you should do a fair tax. There's a whole bunch of great answers out there and things that would work, that would help stimulate the economy, that would create a robust job environment, and would include encourage businesses to come here instead of exporting America. We don't want to see jobs go overseas. We want people to want to manufacture and build here. How do you do that? You can't do it when our taxes are higher than everybody else, and it's a frightening corporate environment. Nobody wants to do business here. Why would they? They'd be Did fired from their job. Did you say nobody job. wants to do well, business in America? on a large scale Holy because smokes. of the punitive tax this structure. Just, let me just tell you, you oh, buy, it's you're true. buying into some That's why poisonous people are, view of and America. And That's just no, not true. No. America is the number one place in the globe, on the world, to That's do business. That's not what I'm saying. Everybody wants to do business in America. If you want to combat it with some kind of sophomoric oh, argument, that's sophomore. do, do oh, your best. Go right ahead, love. Uh, Dana, welcome well, to the show. Thank you. I did, um, actually, uh, to that question about specifics on, at least on the economic question and taxes, uh, Senator Rand Paul has actually put the most detailed plan forward and really showed that he's thought it through. And so somebody like Rand Paul would actually be able to say, I actually have a specific plan so you could look at that. Here's a question I would ask, though. Can I ask two? Yeah. One is would be... Um, a lot of voters, I think, are tuning in, not to just see how they're different from each other, but they want to know, how would you beat Hillary Clinton? And so I think that would be a question is, how would you beat her? Like, what is your, why is your message going to win out? Because I get back to that reality issue, and that's part of my second question. Any candidate, Democrat or Republican, has to win 270 electoral votes. You take California and New York off the table, and now you've got to, pretty much, you've got to win, if you're a Republican, you've got to win every red state, but you also probably have to flip a blue state. Mm -hmm. And what is your strategy, and which state would it be? Which one can you flip? Is it Pennsylvania? Is it Iowa? You know, or is it Colorado? Where do you think that you could win? Mm, those are good questions. Thank you. Wow. Um, I want to talk, I want to show this piece of tape of Donald Trump. Uh, he, he, he is uh, doing very, very well because he's capitalizing on a rejection of politics. But this is nothing new in his world. Uh, and the idea of saying making, making America great again harkens back to the late 80s. I want to show this tape of him talking about how America needs surgery. Some thought he should run for president. Trump considered it. Would you really like to, to take over and run and run the country as you have run your I would organization? Much, I would much prefer that somebody else do it. I just don't know if somebody else is there. I don't know if we have the kind of advocate that you need. We need major surgery. This country needs major Are surgery. Are you the surgeon? I think I do a fantastic job. Uh, so, Kimberly, here's what's He's interesting. Consistent. He said that in June 1989. That was five and a half months after George Herbert Walker Bush was in, uh, sworn in, and eight, eight years and five months of Reaganism, basically, yeah. if you include Bush. And, and the economy was doing great. We had six years of economic expansion. So it tells you that his message is basically the same whether it was Reagan or Obama, right? Well, I guess. I mean, you're pointing out the timeline in terms of when he was saying these things, but I think he's been very consistent throughout his he life and everybody. his career. No, <laughs> he thinks that he can do it better. Mm -hmm. I mean, but aren't we always looking for someone that can improve on our current set of circumstances and conditions? But he felt Isn't it okay to reach high, reach higher, to try to come up with innovative ways right. to create jobs, to stimulate the mm -hmm. economy, to make Americans but feel great can I again? Add, can I ask you, do yeah. you, when he said that America needs serious surgery after Reagan. Doesn't that bug you a little bit? Well, listen, I was very pleased with Reagan. I would go back and I would vote for him again and again. <laughs> so anyway, we could bring him back and I would vote again for him. That's my personal choice. But I like someone that has a vision and a passion and a patriotism for the country. I like someone that has a strong sense of economics and of the business community and how to stimulate the economy. So I'm looking for that in a candidate. And I'm going to listen to what they all have to say. I thought that was a pretty good explanation of why, you know, it's OK for him to say that about Reagan and President Obama. But I still believe that that shows that he doesn't distinguish between the two, in my mind. I think that's right. I mean, I think it's about Donald Trump. It's not about politics, and it's certainly not about established politicians, whether it be Reagan or Obama. I was so fascinated. Now, you point out he has doubled, doubled in the support in the last two months, mm -hmm. according to the Wall Street Journal poll. There's a Fox a News poll. I got a today. Fox News poll right here, since right. you brought it up. Trump's yeah. at 26 percent. Uh, Bush at 15. And yeah. That's quite a jump since mid-July. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable for all the people who said he was going to go away, that he would never last. He, It's unbelievable. Let me just say this to, in response to what Kimberly was saying. You know, it says here in the Wall Street Journal poll that half of Republican primary voters said they want someone who agrees with them on the issues. But about a third, Greg, 
say, it doesn't matter if you agree with me on the issues. They just want someone who's strong, That's your who's got a powerful decisive. image, who's going to make tough decisions. And I don't know what that means. It but means that's you don't have to be want. a conservative. You don't have to even be a conservative. So that right. it doesn't matter what yeah, Trump says. Yeah, it doesn't says. matter. I don't mind. The end of ideology, Juan. Well, Maybe that's a good thing, Eric. We don't care about conservatives or liberals. Just well, being I, blunt. Again, I, I would like to see more context around that. I'm not sure what he was talking about. They could have been talking about immigration. I have no idea. I don't. I didn't see the the, the, the full access. I didn't have access. It was in good to context. Folder. I'm not suggesting it was. I'm just wondering what what was it. What were they talking about? Were they talking? Were they talking it was about a reporter just asking if he was running for president. If he okay, would run for so president. You ask a guy who may like to run for president at some point what's going on in the country, and he mm -hmm. says, I think I could do a jo good job. I don't think that was too outlandish. Okay, we came off Reagan years. We went into Clinton years. Things were getting better. I see it. I understand that. Trump's negatives are going down dramatically. A couple of weeks ago, six weeks ago, 59% said, no matter what, I would not vote for Donald Trump. Now it's the light, m most recent poll down to 33%. Half of the people have switched that, that view. His, his ceiling right. is rising. What he's doing is he's speaking, he's speaking not like a politician. He's speaking like real people. They're mad at D.C. They're mad at what's been going on. They don't want it anymore. And the biggest thing he's got going for him, I'm telling you, is that he doesn't need their money. He doesn't need the donor's money. He doesn't need the, the RNC's money. He doesn't need anyone's money because he has so much. Last Saturday, there was a big meeting in the West Coast in California, and many candidates were sitting there talking to big donors, hundreds of donors, five or so candidates, and Trump said, you know what? I don't need to be here. That means I don't need to speak for them if I get their money. Yeah, because usually that's he's resonating. the donor. Right. He's usually right. the donor. Right. Which is that's good a good business. point. Which is yeah. good business. I mean, he's donated to, donate, to Hillary and he helped Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. I, I, I think there is appeal to that for some voters, that they like it, that he wouldn't have to go out, that he can fund himself. But I also think it works on the, the other way. So somebody like a Scott Walker, blue-collar background, doesn't have a lot of money, is not going to be a self-funder. But in America, you have to go out and you have to actually, it's harder to have to convince somebody that you're worth giving money to. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I, it's one of the reasons that, frankly, a lot of women haven't run in the past, is that they're not really good with the traditionally of saying, of, of, of asking. Like, let me convince you that you should give me money to run. It's hard, it's easier to be a self-funder than it is to actually have to go out and ask for money. The other thing is, can I say, in 1989, five and a half months into George H.W. Bush's presidency, that's when a lot of people were actually positioning already because there was no heir apparent. Right. 41 was the heir apparent to Reagan. He won. After that, that whole that next primary in the year um, when George H.W. Bush ran for re-election, there wasn't much of a primary, but they, everybody was gearing up because they wanted to challenge him. One last thing There's is that Jeb, Jeb Bush is hurt in the Fox poll, uh, or not hurt in the Fox poll by Trump, but in the Wall Street Journal poll, he's hurt. And Cruz seems to be right in position. If anything happens to Trump, mm -hmm. Ted Cruz. He's going to cook more bacon. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. I bed. can't wait for the debate. Bring I can't bacon. cook your bacon. Oh, I love bacon. No, it's like the start. It's like that, that opening break shot of a game of pool. Yeah. The first debate because it gets yeah. the air, spreads things out. Hopefully some will sink. The poet. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> All right, ahead. Hillary Clinton is hoping women voters will help her become the first female president, but her support is fading faster than my weekend tan. Dana's got the numbers next.